Hello everybody, this is Anthony Aro from the AbletonCookbook.com and today we're going to be talking a little bit about cue points. And uh, cue points are something that people often miss, um, people who come from traditional DJ software like Serato or um, Tractor, they they come to Ableton and they sort of uh, they sort of miss this thing which is called a cue point, which is a um, <clears throat> basically it's a way to skip to a specific part of a song on the fly, and this can be all kinds of things. It can be you know the you can basically set a cue point in Tractor for example for the intro and then another one for the breakdown, then another one for the hook, and then another one for the outro, and I think. I mean, I'm not sure if there's some limit, but basically you can ha have as many cue points as, as you want. Um, within a clip in Ableton, there's no, there's nothing like this, unfortunately. So what I'm going to talk about today is a way to basically do the exact same thing um, in Ableton uh, without, um, without using cue points. So we're going to do something a little bit different, but um, essentially it's going to be a cue point. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So as you can see here, I have a clip. This, in this case, it is DJ Deller's Romantic Call, a song that I'm very fond of. Um, and it's already warped. As you can see here, it has this little pad intro that is actually causes a lot of problems when you go to warp. Um, because but then there is that kick on the not on the after eight bars, so that, that does help a little bit. So anyway, so I have it all warped up already. We're not gonna talk about how, how to warp right now, but um, so I have it all warped. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that over to the arrange view. So the way I'm gonna do that is just gonna control click or right click, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut and go over to, let's see, go over to um, the arrange view. And I'm going to just uh, right click and paste and of course you can do all that with uh, the keyboard shortcuts as well but I'm doing it with the menus just to make sure that everyone sees what's going on so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna label the different parts of the song that I want to cue so let's go ahead and listen to it real quick oh and this is something that's really important here uh, to point out um, this box right here if it is red then the arrangement view is playing or the session view is playing rather. That's what this these little this little stack of rectangles refers to. If it is unclicked, then the arrange view will play. So you notice that when I pressed play, this turned gray, and that meant that actually the arrange view or the session view was playing. So make sure this is unclicked. All right, so we have a little intro here. And if I remember correctly, it goes about eight bars. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click up here and add a locator, just label it pad intro. So this is just for you, so name it whatever you want. Then right here, I have the drums coming in, so I'll just add a locator, uh, say drum intro, and then bass line. Okay, so the bass line is gonna start about here. And bass in, okay, and there's a breakdown. So the breakdown right here. Once again, right click, add locator, and oh, re I gotta rename this. Rename first breakdown, let's say. And then the hook I think is. <laughs> So at 49, there we go. So let's just stop there, but I could go on um, basically forever uh, if I wanted to. I could do every single different part of the song, but that's that's will be sufficient. So now that we've got these all marked up, let's go ahead and split this clip. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that I did um, when I was did the tutorial about how to use Ableton like MLR. You're just going to split this by selecting the region you want to split off and Command E. You can also do it like this and select the set portion you want to split and go to Edit and do Split like this. And this is really easy to do if you just do every other one. 
and then you can see that now they're all different clips. It's just handy, right? So then I'll go in and I'll rename them whatever name I had up here. Base in really not very good at capitalization. <laughs> I realized. Um, break and hook, right? Okay, so there we go. And then now I'm going to want to get all these back into session view. So how I'm going to do that is select the first one, hold down shift, and select the last one, and it's going to select everything. And then once again, Command X is going to cut and then Command V is going to paste. And now you can see I have a little stack of all the different clips that are all the different parts, which actually are all different cue points. So now we have to basically add follow actions for all of them, because right now, if you'll notice, look, I'll play this one. Fast forward a little bit. And that's not what you, you don't want that to happen. So you want them to follow one from one to the other. So once again, select them all, select the top one, Shift, select the bottom. Go down here to the launch pane. If it's not open, you can press this little uh, L right here. Um, and you can, in this little follow action selector, select next. And once again, anything that you do when all of them are selected, when you have multiple clips selected and you change one parameter, it's gonna change all of them. So that's really helpful. Um, so now, if you'll notice, you'll go through them, they all have the next follow action. But uh, All right, so now what we're gonna have to do is basically just figure out how long this clip is, actually, and we do that by measuring this white part as opposed to the gray part, and we're just gonna type it in here. And what that means is that after, for example, eight bars here, eight, the next clip is gonna start. So let's do, just go for all of them, let's see. We could also just subtract this. So 17 minus 9 is 8. This next one. Let's see. Okay. 33 minus 17 is 16, I believe. Hope so. Right. <laughs> and this one is going to be 49 minus 33. That is also 16. And this one, we don't actually have to worry about because it's the last one. So we'll have no action from that one because there's no clip to continue on to. So if I click this one up here, it should, they should flow into one another. So let's go ahead and see. As you can see, once you've done all this stuff, you basically have the you basically have the ability to make infinite cue points. If you'd really like to, you can make a cue point every bar. God bless you. Um, and what you can do also is you can just save this all together so that you can drag it back in when you need it. So what you're gonna do is select all these by selecting the first one, pressing shift, and selecting the last one. Now they're all selected. And I'm just gonna drag them into my file here, which is for my clips file, for example. And now here it is, and I'll just call this romantic call. And see, let's say I delete this all, and I have a new track, or sort of a blank, blank set here. 
if I just drag this in, there we go. It's going to all come back and it's going to all be um, marked up with the correct follow actions and everything. So you can see this took a little bit longer because I because I was explaining it at the time, but I can usually do this, I would say, in about five minutes per track. And once you do it, you really don't have to do it again. So it actually is um, its a pretty handy little thing to do. So anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, make sure to stay tuned to the AbletonCookbook.com for uh, more tips like this. Talk to you later. Bye.